Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at that bear we've been working on. This is uh, part three in that series, kind of stepping up your game or intermediate chainsaw carving tutorial. Um, last video we did the detail work. Now first video we blocked this whole bear out, right? And then the second video we went in and did the furring and discussed that in pretty good detail, I do believe. Now this video, we are back in my carving tent and we're gonna be using power tools today. What tools, you may ask? Well, you're gonna need a die grinder with a flame bit. This is a quarter inch shaft, half inch flame burr from Sabertooth Tools. This is their coarse green burr, okay? We're also uh, another die grinder or the same die grinder, a quarter inch shaft, this is their half inch, I think it's their half inch, cross cutter burr. It's kind of gonna do a dome effect for the eye. We're also gonna be using a Dremel with an eighth inch shaft and what's called their eye cutter burr. And this is gonna be their medium grit or their yellow grit, okay? We will also need a drill with a Sandoflex or a homemade flap sander of some type. Now. I am going to have a couple of these extensions ready in my Etsy store. If you guys are interested, let me know and I will share that link in the description. I think there's a link to the Etsy store in the description already, but I think we're going to get a couple of these out there and then maybe start taking orders for them. I think that's going to be the way it works for these uh, extensions with the handle and everything. That way there, get your sander out away from your body. And uh, yeah, anyway, I like using it. So after that, you will need some type of torch. I'm going to be using big propane torch today. All right, my turbo torch. I'll try to have links to uh, the things I'm using or similar things through Amazon. I don't believe Amazon has the Sabertooth burr, so go right to sabertooth.com to get those. So we got our tools, our torch, obviously your jaw horse, your carving, safety gear, guys, and some sort of spray paint. Krylon is really good. Rust-Oleum is really good, but I bought a bunch of this really cheap color place stuff, so I'm just gonna use this, just black spray paint. We're also gonna need a little bit of black paint here, a little bit of brown, your color brown that you wanna make for the eyes, all right? With that, you'll need a brush. A couple small brushes and some water to uh, you know rinse them off as needed. After those tools and everything, you'll need a clear coat. This is what I put on my carvings. It can be gloss, it can be satin, it can be semi-gloss, whatever you choose. But this is what I like to put on my carvings. And at the end of everything, you can brush on one or two coats of that. So anyway, hopefully you guys are still here. Give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. And uh, let's get into uh, cleaning up these ears, creating some eyes, this nose, and just cleaning this guy up and finishing this bear. All right guys, here we are getting started. Diving right into it, right? Hopefully you guys like the sound of my voice, because apparently I like talking. Anyway, we are running a quarter inch shaft, half inch green coarse burr from Sabertooth Tools, all right? Those are the burrs, again, those are the burrs I'm running, Sabertooth Tools, in my quarter inch shaft die grinder, all right? This is just a Harbor Freight die grinder. I use the Harbor Freights because you can buy a couple of them for the price of a big name brand. Then you don't have to keep swapping bits out, right? So all we're doing here is we're knocking off the edges on these ears, rounding corners over, light shaping, thinking about the shape that we really want to achieve as our end goal, right? So we're knocking over any hard edges. We're thinking about a bear that has rounded parts, not square parts, not hard edges, something that's a little more realistic. Now, I realize this doesn't look like a real bear, right? It looks a lot more realistic than some of the others I've done, but it's not 100% realistic. But it doesn't have blocky edges, it doesn't have hard corners, or at least when we're done, hopefully it won't. So again, cleaning up those ears, it's important that we pay attention to detail on all aspects of the carving. Um, you know, if we were doing a full piece all the way around the back as well. Now, like I said before in another video, the back of this carving is pretty flat. So this will be kind of, you know, you'll, you'll kind of sell it as a piece that goes against the wall or in a corner. Um, heck, you don't even have to bring that up to a customer. You just sell it as it is. They'll see that the majority of detail is on the front of the piece and, you know, It'll be sold that way. You'll be fine. You'll sell it. 
So working your way around, work your way to the back, this can all be time consuming stuff, right? And I'm sure a lot of the video is very self-explanatory if you're just watching and uh, paying attention. You now why go over those parts right there? Because if you can see on the right hand side in the between the ears, it looks still rough. Well, the back of the ears are just as rough as that. So all I'm doing is one, smoothing off that roughness, but two, by smoothing it off and going certain ways with the burr like I'm doing right there, scraping back and forth on those ears, it's adding just a little bit of texture. Now on the base that the bear stands on, I like to take the burr, run it around, and again, remove that, that wood that's like torn, rough, shredded looking from carving because that happens, and smoothing it out. We're paying attention to more details, right? We're trying to improve the work that we're doing and that also means you know paying attention to the base that the bear is sitting on moving up to my stump i could or my uh post for the sign we could leave that all rough too but again let's just clean it up right we're cleaning it up clean up is important if you don't take the time and the steps to clean up then your achievement of getting more detail isn't there like you're not you're not getting to a higher level of carving, right? Because you're just leaving it rough with the saw. And ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to step up our game. We're trying to make pieces that we can sell for a little bit more money. And, uh, you know, put a little more time into it. Now, on the flip side of that, you don't want this bear, um, you know, in a month or two months from now you've been practicing. You don't want these bears to still take you two days to make. Right? You should be able to knock out a handful of these in a day. That is the plan. You set yourself up and knock out at least two. You want to be able to knock out at least two or three of these in a day. Now, when I say in a day, I mean carving. So you want to get all your carving work done with the chainsaw. Like you want all your chainsaw work done in a day. So the next day you can go through and sand and paint and finish. Then it gives it a few hours to breathe, release some moisture in the wood, and now you're ready to, to do some detail work. As you guys can see here, I'm just plunging in with that bit for the ears. Um, you know, you can do what I did here or just play around with it. Get a shape that you like. I'm just messing around with a little bit, something new as far as the inside of that ear goes. Um, and then just adding some lines with the nose of the burr there to kind of make it look like fur coming up the ears just a little bit nothing too crazy but uh you know just a little bit of texture in there so it's a little more realism so the ears aren't just like smooth and flat because really that is the goal how you know adding detail thinking about details and what can we add if you have overcut lines like carve those away with your burr and then add the fresh fur over them like I just did there, take a step back, look at your piece, right? What are we going to work on? So here we're looking at the snout, and we're just smoothing out our cuts from the chainsaw because these cuts right here, the last thing we did was chainsaw work. So now we're smoothing things out, we're going in, we're connecting fur lines right up to the snout. That's why I'm pulling away, right? Getting underneath, overlapping the fur. Now in the mouth, we're just doing a little quick up cut and moving back up to the snout and just kind of rounding things over. We shouldn't have anything that's too square. We shouldn't, or hard edges, you know. Cleaning up, cleaning up, right? Even the bottom side of the chin, clean it up. Don't leave it rough. It's probably more detail than I should be giving, but you know what? I figured... I've figured out most of this stuff on my own. I didn't train with somebody else. It's just been trial and error. And yes, some YouTube videos back in the day. And now I don't watch a ton of, you know, how to do videos as far as carving. I just want my own style. And so I take the steps to just practice and try new things. If you're not comfortable trying new things, it's going to be hard to improve your art, right? It's going to be hard to step your game up. So be open to trying new things. And, you know, if you do a few bears that are like mine or similar to mine, that's cool. But then don't be afraid if you want to try a different design in the eyes or the snout, you know, make it wider, flatter, shorter, longer. Like you can try those things. It's your art form. Try it. Make the work your own. Make pieces so when people look at them, they go, oh, that's Joe's work. Look at that. That's Susan's work. I know that person. They made that. 
you know what I mean? So that's, you know, like that's kind of the goal, right? People look at your stuff and they know, oh, that's, that's your work. Without even looking at the initials, they can look at it and know it's you. So I talked through it, but we just detailed the nose quick. And now I just smoothed out those bubbly areas for the eyes. We're basically just plunging in here. We're doing like an upper eyelid eyebrow area. By putting this in, it kind of defines that eyebrow area. And we're trying to match our lines on the opposite side, which can be difficult sometimes, right? To get them perfect, but you don't have to be perfect. You want it close. Go in, clean these things up. If you see edges in the fur that needs to be rounded more because it looks kind of blocky or square, hit it, round it, re-add the fur. Plunging in up underneath that piece we just carved and going over. All right, so we're cutting in, and as you guys can see on the left, well, you can see pretty good on both sides, I think. All right, we got that nice arc in there that we just carved, nice little arch rounding up over. We're gonna go in and try to get the same length and a very similar shape on this side. You will find one side is so much easier than the other. In this case, my left side carves much easier than my right side. So I have to pay attention a lot more when I'm trying to do that right side of the piece. These aren't things people usually talk about. One side's easier than the other. It's the same thing with furring. When you add fur, one side is easier than the other. So right now these are kind of like light carves. See how we block that out underneath for that eye? Come in, plunging in a little bit, keep it moving. Now guys, you can use that Dixon wood crayon and draw these on. I don't. I kind of go with the flow of the piece. And so each one's a little different, has a little different expression or a little bit different face. I like to wing it. That's just my style. I like to wing it. So we've got the grinder tipped way up and we're cutting down and kind of rounding that area. So it's like a bubble. So the eyes are bubbled. They're not flat. They're bubbled just a little bit. Takes a little practice, a little time. Don't get frustrated. Again, there's some little overcuts or you couldn't get the saw real close to the snout. That's what this burr's for. Look at getting in there, adding our furring lines. I realize it's a little different than the other side. That's all right, you know, make it work for you. Do your own thing. Getting up here, shaping up around that eyebrow area. Cleaning it up. We'll add fur lines back to the top of those eyebrows, but right now we wanna get our shape in there a little bit more, right? We're not going to leave those smooth. We'll do a little bit of furring. See? We're not done with furring either. We have another bit we'll use and we'll actually add some thinner fur lines in here to kind of connect. So a lot of this is self-explanatory, like as you guys are watching, right? And if you look at both sides of the screen back and forth, you'll see different angles that I'm holding the die grinder at. Right, really up and down and using the side of the burr and pulling across, not necessarily using the tip and just like scraping down in. Be a little conscious as to like what it is you're doing and what you're trying to create. So now we've switched over to the cross cutter burr from Sabretooth. This is their uh, quarter inch shaft. I believe the quarter inch burr or half inch burr, half inch cross cutter. So this is nice because it makes a dome perfectly round circle. So I push it in, it burns, which is wonderful. I like the way that it does that. And boom, it gives us this round eye, right? With the work we've already done, it adds so much detail around the eye in an easy manner. Okay, see all the work around? Boom, ah, oh, yeah. What do you guys think, you like that? So listen. You want to learn and take your time to go the same depth, okay? You want it in, back a little bit, but not too deep, not too shallow, so it'll take practice to kind of figure it out. There's that little uh, eye called the Eye Cutter Burr from Sabretooth. Now this one is a yellow, and I believe it's like a medium grit, okay? Eighth inch shaft, Eye Cutter Burr, medium grit. It's their yellow one. So this will go in and refine and define. 
I know I'm talking and I'm giving you all these explanations, but if you guys are watching the video, you can kind of see. We're just going in, we're cleaning up around the eye, we're cleaning up our eye lines, adding little fur lines, kind of doing that little detail work around the face, right? Making this a big feature for, you know, big feature is a selling point, making a nice face, trying to really hone it in. There's certain aspects, if we pay greater attention to them, other things sometimes can be looked over as far as the selling process goes. Like, as far as a customer looking at the bear and saying, oh, not all your fur runs perfectly. Well, they're not looking at that. They're looking at that face. How does that face look? How'd that head come out, right? Does that stuff look great? Does it flow well? I'm not so concerned that all my fur isn't perfect but the face and the head and the ears and the snout they've all come out really great and then you know like it's a selling feature of your bear and customers like that so as you guys are watching just want to mention real quick and i will mention it again at the end of the video in a little bit more detail but i'm going to be creating a very specific video on a specific carving for my members so if you're on the members tier it's been a long time coming since I've put a new video on there. Um, there's a lot of people that buy me a cup of coffee. They've joined other tutorial tiers in the membership area. You know, they basically what they do is they sign up for a monthly fee to help support the channel, help the work, help support the work that I do. I've got all these videos on here, but you know, YouTube doesn't pay you a ton of money. They really don't um, for the hours and the time and. All those things that go into these videos, you really don't get the compensation that you should for all the work. You don't even make minimum wage. You you don't even make the wage a waitress would make before tips. It's, uh, it's a little crazy to think that you create all this content and uh, YouTube really makes millions of dollars off, off viewers and off our backs and then we get fractions of a penny per view. So... For people that have joined up and become members, I really, really do appreciate it. And you know, if you don't want to become a member, guys, you don't have to. This isn't a sob story. I'm not concerned about it. But if you want to, do it. I appreciate it. I thank you for it. Also, I have added a PayPal account link down below. So if you wanted to do a one-time thing, wanted to help something out, you're very appreciative, you want to keep the channel going, you want to put money toward a new GoPro, you want to put money toward saw parts, you want to do something like that toward my channel, toward the work that I do, you are more than welcome to leave me a note on, uh, you know, the the bit that you send through PayPal, and, uh, you know, I'll be sure to mention you in a video, so really do appreciate that stuff. Now, once you've got your face done, we're moving into a flap sander, you guys can see I've got my extension and my Sandoflex going. I am going to this weekend. I'm going to do it. I have two of these available, and I'm going to get them on the Etsy store. There's a link to the Etsy store down in the description, all right, guys? And I'm going to have those two available. We will see how quickly they go, and I think I'm going to set it up so once they sell out, I can take orders, all right? So, like, you can place an order, and it'll be, like, probably a two-week wait before we we're able to get it out to you, so two or three week wait, I'm not sure yet, but we'll get that set up. Basically when I'm doing this, I try to always have the sander sanding upwards. That's why I work around the carving and I'm not like flipping the handle around the other way so it sands down, I like to sand up. Get done with that, go around, hit everything with the torch, all of it, okay? Torchy, 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 torch that guy up. Now, if you guys have a hard time burning and torching, the wood might be wet and it might need to sit another day to kind of dry out. But once you get your burning done, um, go through and hit it again with the flab sander. It gets all the loose stuff off there, okay? I haven't mentioned it, but like having compressed air really, really helps to help dust off your carving as you're working on it as well. Having a little, even if it's just a little portable air compressor. Carving gets expensive, guys. There's a lot of tools. There's a lot of tools that you'll acquire over time that'll help you out. You'll realize that. But once you get everything, you know, you're good to go. So I'm just going through removing any of that loose soot from carving, any of that, you know, loose pieces, cleaning it up, knocking over our hard edges. I'm running 80 grit 
on the slab sander. It's just what I use, 80 grit. It reacts well. If I was using hardwood, I'd go through with 80 and then maybe 120 to kind of get rid of some of the 80 lines. But as far as carving bears go, I'm not too worried about it. So you go through, you hit the whole piece, right? Get it all sanded up and you'll be ready for some paint. After you're done with the flap sander, grab your paint and some cardboard with a nice edge, okay? Not a ripped edge, a decent edge though. Hold it over the bottom piece that the bear's standing on. Do your best to not completely cover it in paint. This will help show separation that your bear's standing on a platform and it helps a little bit as well for the detail in the sense, you know, this is two pieces and not one piece. So it kind of shows like, hey, the bear's standing on a platform and it's not like, hey, this is all one singular piece, right? Just turning my fan on to kind of blow the paint away. I know I'm still wearing my RZ mask. Guys, I'm an affiliate with RZ though. You can totally purchase these down below. I have an RZ affiliate link. The purchases help support the channel as well. Get your refills through there, get a new mask, all that good stuff. Now, painting and the RZ mask. RZ mask is great for dust and all that. It's not necessarily a paint mask, okay? I use a respirator often for the sake of videos and stuff. I just leave the dust mask on and just, I don't swap out, but a paint respirator is a really good idea. Again, though, it's another investment, right? 30, 40 bucks for a respirator to actually not be sucking in paint fumes all the time, but worth the investment if it's something you're doing a lot. Over there, you're not inhaling those paint fumes and jacking your lungs up. So you see, we're trying to get every angle of the carving painted with our spray paint. Once you do that, then you guys will be ready to uh, start working on the eyes and the face. Woohoo, right? Get into that face paint. But we get around, we do the whole thing. You can put it on lightly. You can do two coats. I tend to do just one fairly quick coat. Um, sometimes it soaks in and has different shades due to the burn and the light burn, the dark burn, right? It'll show through. It gives your bear a little bit of character. So, you know, don't be afraid, though, to, to cover him up and uh, make it a black bear. Now we got to get around here and look at our face and be kind of conscious as to how we're spraying our paint. I like a little brown to be on my snout still, so I kind of shoot toward the face, down the snout, a little bit on the nose, right? A little bit down the sides of the snout, and go way up, hit the end. Try not to do too much, you'll get a run. Come from the back of the bear, shoot forward down the center of the snout, connecting to the nose, right? From the side, bang. From the side, bang. Now we gotta go down to that lower jaw. Little drip there. Come down to that lower jaw though. Whoop, just a quick line. Now I like to leave that little bit of brown on the sides. All right, helps define the face so he's not just all black. All right, done with spray paint, moving into eyes. I'm using like a, uh, I don't remember, like a chestnut color. You guys use whatever color you want. Go lighter, go darker, whatever. I like to go this medium brown kind of color, this tan. So that when I do the pupils, there's definitely a definition between the brown and the black pupil and the black of the fur around the eye, right? Helps it stand out, kind of like the snout. Now this is just an acrylic-based apple barrel paint from Wally World. Um, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing special, guys. You know, a couple bucks a bottle. Now we're on to the black. Wait till the brown dries and then move on to the black. I like to make the pupils like big. When you make them small, to me it just doesn't look right. While I have the black out, if there's any spots that I got, you know, a little over the brown touched, I just fix it. All right, it guys, up. hopefully your bear looks something like this. All right, we got the post the sign sits on where his hand's over it. So the goal is so that it looks like it's a, a sign sitting on a post, right? Kind of like that. Here's those eyes, a little closer shot for you guys. All right, so now I let that paint dry, and then I clear coat this whole piece with that Helmsman, Minwax Helmsman clear coat, like I showed you guys earlier, right? We'll brush it on. 
If you brush it on, you don't have to worry about overspray or anything like that, but you can put one to two coats. Two coats would be the best. I'll end up spraying mine, but that's just more stuff you gotta buy. Um, if you decide to spray, it's a good idea to have several pieces done and then spray them all at once. Also, you need to have a real respirator. That's what we should be wearing anyway as we spray paint. This is a dust mask. This is not a real respirator. A real respirator um, has big filters and stuff. That's a really good idea for painting and uh, clear coating. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll try to link one from Amazon down below, the one that I normally have. All right, so now there's those eyes. Now the paint's not quite dry. It's running a little bit too because I globbed it in kind of heavy. But that's okay, we'll let it dry. We'll come back through with the brown and kind of touch up my runs um, and use, so if you do the Baron Satin or semi-gloss, cool. But get yourself a small can of gloss, all right? Um, just gloss exterior polyurethane and only put the gloss on the eyeballs. And those eyeballs will look that much more real and they'll really, really pop. So I'm hoping this is helping you guys step up your game in, uh, in your chainsaw carving. This bear, along with the other ones I've been creating of this size, I think I'm going to be selling for $250. And so what that means is we took a 20 inch log, 20 inches across, 24 inches tall. All right. We took that one chunk of log and we turned it into what? A thousand bucks, right? So that's not bad. That's a pretty good day. But really, in reality, you could probably bang out four six depending on how you're carving eight of these in a day um all carved up and then the next day you could come through and detail all of them right so if you could get eight carved in a day and the next day all you have is power tool work and paint and finish you're looking at making two grand worth of product in two days not too bad and that is out of what a four four and a half foot log i mean pretty good deal so just something to think about, you guys. You know, I mean, you're getting a little more serious about it. So I would assume you want to sell. That's what I'm thinking, right? For my bears right now, I'm going to stick 250 on them. Your bears, maybe you don't have the detail yet. Maybe you don't have all this down. Start with a lower price. So as you continue to get better and improve, you could up your prices every so many months or every year, your prices go up as you continue to improve your work. If you jump out of the gate at 250 and your bears still look very beginner, very blocky, very low detail, very, you know what I mean? You're not taking the time. Customers will be able to see that and they don't really want to pay for it. So just kind of keep that in mind. I know I'll probably get some harassment. There's always people on here who've been doing this longer than me. People on here who carve way better than me. People on here who have a bigger ego than me that'll let me know I'm wrong and, you know, my stuff looks like crap, but it's okay. I like it. It comes out great. My customers enjoy my work. And uh, that's honestly all I'm really worried about. And it's all you should worry about as well. You're always going to have critics. Keep in mind, some critics help you improve and some critics are just there to bring you down. You have to be able to cipher those out on your own. Anyway, hopefully this video has helped you guys out. Now, the next little video I'm going to do is how to create just a basic sign for this particular bear. And honestly, this sign design can be used on any bear that's going to hold a sign but it's kind of going to be for this one to kind of round off our our series here with the last little four-part video now like i said this will be for this guy this bear but you can do this for any any bear carving that needs a sign so i've dragged this out long enough guys if you've been watching following along leave me a comment i would love to see how your bears have come out so be sure to share them on the facebook page if you haven't joined join it's kyle hall woodworker new carvers go Make sure you answer all the questions. If you don't answer all the questions, I don't let you in the group, okay? It's trying to make sure we keep all the spam out. And you guys can share your bears there, okay? Stepping up your game. Share them there with the group. And I'll be able to see them and I try to comment. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, anything else I can help you with, be sure to do that. Also, members, I'm going to be working on a video specifically for my members. And... Uh, Actually, let's go take a look so you guys can see what that carving is going to look right, like. So members, I think we are going to work on creating a piece like this together. Okay. This is like a thin cut of log. All right. It's a small piece, but this is the kind of thing I'm going to sell for 200 bucks. Two bears on it. All right. 
I want to go through and uh, walk members, those of you that have become members to the channel, on how to create one of these or something similar. So if you're a member, you can look forward to that. If you're not and you want to become one, jump on over and be a member, guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get this video together for you. Or wait until this video is done and then become a member. I'll let you guys know when it's uploaded. So anyway, hope you guys have been fun carving up those bears. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day and keep an eye out for that sign video. Thanks for watching.